Valve announces the Steam OS for your living room. We review the Toshiba Excite 10 Android tablet. And also, don't be a dick and steal cable. All that coming up on this episode of GT Live. This episode of GT Live is brought to you by Personas. Personas makes some of the highest quality gear around, like mixers, preamplifiers, monitors, controllers, signal processors, and even software. For more information, please visit Personas.com today. Welcome, everyone, to another edition of GamerTech.TV. I'm Jace Rossi, your host, and of course, joining me as she does every week, she's a little orange. No, I'm just kidding. Oh. Please welcome Annie back to the show. No, I'm not doing this show tonight. Yeah, see, look at her. Look at her. She looks beautiful. She's see, like she, Oompa Loompa. She's not Oompa Oompa. It just, I think it looks darker on our on our preview screen than it actually really is. Hey, look, my G is actually, look, I didn't cut it off this time. Someone you pointed that out. You can see the full name. I can see the full name. Good we also got angle. the, and yeah, we got the good animated background back also. We did. All right. So I think we got a little bit of explaining to do on where the heck we've been now you might want to go get some popcorn it, it, it could be a few minutes on this one uh just make sure you can turn the stream up so you can still hear it okay make sure you do that. first things first the iphone event okay we are supposed to cover the iphone event on the 10th and we did not because we started having hiccups in our internet service and so we decided to forego it and I mean, there was a lot of people that were covering it. So we we're like, eh, it's fine. You know, people can uh, find it other places. So we for we foregoed it. And then we went to do, let's see, that was the 10th. So we went to do a show that, that Saturday. And we did the show on Monday. We went to do the show on that Saturday. And again, our internet was, the download was fine. Like we have 25 down, six up, I think is what it's supposed to be. And... We were getting the download was fine, but the upload was like non existent. Like point four. Like zero point four. I think the lowest that it actually got to was zero point zero three nine, which is I don't know, basically non existent. Basically non existent. So what happened <laughs> is a lot of phone calls. A lot of phone calls. A lot of tech visits. I, I was kinda mad. A little bit. A little mad because we've only had the service, the business service, since the first. And it was the 10th. And it was only like our third episode was <laughs> was out there. And we're trying to do the fourth episode. And so we called and they were, you know, they said, oh, it's just a problem in your area. And we'll have it fixed overnight. We'll have it fixed overnight. It was, you know, some line issue. So we wait till Sunday and we're like, nope, still not fixed. And... They we called again and their tech came out. And as soon as the tech comes out, this happens every time. As soon as they come out, it starts working like perfectly fine, like no problem. So then we were like, okay, you know, it's working now. It gets to round show time on Monday. And then we tried to do a show on Sunday because we we're trying to make up for the yeah, Saturday we trying, show. Right. So we were, and we posted, we were like, okay, we're going live. This is it. You know, we're fine. Everything's fixed. Get to round show time. Zilch. Yeah. No upload whatsoever. None at all. We're like so angry. We're like, you know, throwing monkeys around. You know, it was, it was bad. Or raccoons. That's what we were throwing around. We were throwing, throwing raccoons. raccoons. We were throwing raccoons. And so we called them again. We was like, you know, look, you know, we're a business. You know, we do live broadcasting. You know, this is really, really hindering our, our, our business here. And they were like, okay, we're going to put an ASP order on it, you know, and, you know, get someone out there, you know, to, that night. Didn't show up. Grant, you, it was like six o'clock, you know, seven o'clock. So we were like, okay, you know. We'll, we'll forgive them for that one. So the next morning, they call us. Okay, we didn't call them. They called us. And then we're like, okay, the problem that we found was that there was an outage in your area. And it had been escalated, basically, from our address to a, a whole thing. 
so we're like, okay. So they're like, it'll be fixed by the end of the day. Okay, so this is already what? Tuesday? Tuesday or Wednesday. Tuesday or Wednesday. And nothing. Still wasn't fixed. So we called them again that night and they were just like, okay. Now, in all the techs on the phone saw packet loss. That was the funny thing. But when the tech showed up here physically, it was fine. So we fought with him and fought with him. Finally, come to what? Friday, Saturday? Saturday. Uh, yeah, Saturday. Yeah. Um, we were like, oh, okay, you're like, dude, like, seriously, well, this needs to be fixed because it was doing the same thing. And we call, get another tech on the phone, sees the packet loss, send somebody out. And the guy, before he even shows up and like introduces himself, he just like busts through my door. He's like, dude, okay, seriously, this is what's going on. So the problem is, is there was an outage in your area, but it seems to be localized to really your address. So I'm going to put in a maintenance ticket for the line trucks to come out to this address to try to find the problem. And we're like, okay, well, we've heard that already. I mean, this guy, though, he said he went up on the pole. Yeah, he went up on the pole. And he could actually run a speed test from up there. And he actually saw the, like, point zero four. No, up. Up. And he was like, that's that's not right. No, it's... And he was saying that was connected directly to their line to where... Yeah. It should have been getting like 20 up. Yeah. Because of the way he was connected to the pole and it was getting nothing. So yeah. he's like, something's definitely wrong. He listened to line truck. So he was like, yo, it, it, it's the same day. He was like, they should be out here within a couple hours. So we're like, fine. We're like, we'll call them tomorrow if it doesn't work. And but the way he even made it sound, he's like, you know, there might be, you know, it's going to be a bucket truck. They might show up like right here. The node might be a little more yeah. further down, you know, basically saying like, yeah, we might not actually. See the guy. See them, but they would be here. Yeah. So, I'm in the middle of GTA 5, which we have a nice story about. And I'm sitting here playing, and someone rings the doorbell. And lo and behold, it's like, it's the line tech. I'm like, oh, man, they actually came here. Something must be really wrong. And the guy comes in. He's like, is your internet working? And I was just like, well, it's working, but my upload sucks. He's like, run a speed test. So I run a speed test. Perfect. Run it again. Perfect. I use, like, multiple sites. Perfect. And the guy was like, okay, your problem is fixed. And I was like, great. What was the problem that caused me like 10 days of not being able to do anything? Apparently three boneheads on the apartment complex, two streets down, they were stealing cable. And what happens when you do this is that you introduce line noise into the system. And since I'm really the only business on this tap that they were tapping into, it sent all of that noise to me killing my upload so because of three bonehead stealing cable we couldn't do a show yeah so that is the reason why we have not done a live show in over a week there's been no new downloads or anything like that but the problem is fixed and we obviously we stream this episode live which you should be watching if you're watching the pre-records uh so everything seems to be fixed now so because of three guys stealing cable messed up our stream so we apologize for anyone who's just like oh look they did three episodes and then they left (laughs) screw these guys but no but so we're trying to get we're we're, we're trying and so now we're gonna have more shows now plus uh, reviews and game streams and things like that uh cool thing about it the three guys that were stealing cable they all got arrested yep so at least there's that went to jail they went to jail because it is illegal to steal cable so yeah, so we we lost some stuff, didn't get to do shows. Got a good story. But we got a good story out of it. So that's why we didn't do the iPhone event, and that's why we didn't stream or do anything over the past, I don't know, 11 days. Yeah. So there's the story that we have. also want to mention that we're working with DailyMotion.com. We're going to be actually uploading all of our videos, of course, to YouTube, uh, Blip, and then we're also going to be using DailyMotion. Uh, to be like the center hub for all of our videos, because I like the way that they turn out. They turn out really clear on Daily Motion. So if you go to dailymotion.com slash gamertechtv, you can see the episodes that are already uploaded. And plus, we're also going to be streaming live with them when we start doing HD, which should be November. So, or or unless Wirecast 5 comes out early. And then I, that's a whole other story. But yeah, so we're going to be streaming live with them in 720p and all the videos are in 720p and they look great i'm like i'm really surprised at just how awesome they look and so yeah we're gonna be using that uh, i'm working with them right now to try to get the rss feed to actually pull the videos so we can put that in itunes 
instead of the blip TV feed because they're not doing HD for some reason for us. Don't know. So dailymotion.com slash gamer tech TV. But before we get into any of the stories, we want to take a look at one thing. We went to the state fair. You know, obviously we had some downtime, so we went to the state <laughs> fair. Uh, I picked up this cool Batman unboxing knife. And I know people watch I'm a lot. very proud of it. I'm very proud of this knife. Uh, I paid a whole $20 for this knife. It is awesome. Actually, my mom paid $20 for this knife. <laughs> it was a surprise. Uh, but if you've seen Michael Manna, you know, T4 show, you'll, you'll know that uh, he has one of these. And it is really, really cool and really, really sharp. So you have to be very, very careful when you, when you do it. But yes, this is our new unboxing knife. And we're actually going to unbox something because we did go to a GTA uh, 5 event at GameStop. Hey, we got free pizza out of it. You, you can't beat that. Uh, but while, while we were there, Annie saw this sitting on a shelf. And I'm going to switch over to her. And she knows everything about this game. And it's also upside down. She knows everything about this game and doesn't really need this guide at all. But, but it's so pretty. But this is the limited edition World of Warcraft Mr. Pandaria. I think it's like the, you know, you're blinding it now with the lights. Ah, there you go. But this is like the strategy guide. No, not, not at all. But you know, this is the strategy guide, basically. And on the back of it, I mean, she's going to actually open this and like take it out. We paid like 20 bucks for it, too. It was, actually, it was cheaper than that. It was 16 with a pro. But it has this other guy that's in the back. It's got like an art book. And it also comes with these uh, pair of chopsticks that are really, really awesome. Uh, that was really the whole reason she really wanted it. It's but, pretty inside, too. Yeah. But she is going to use the Batman unboxing knife. I don't know if we should let them use it. Okay. Mm, no, you're fine. Mm. It's just to get the plastic off. Okay. There you go. All right. Pretty sure my nails will accomplish that. Uh, yeah, but then you wouldn't be able to use the cool <laughs> Batman knife. Here we go. It's not really an unboxing. It's an unwrapping. We're unwrapping it. So we're unwrapping it. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Christmas. Oh. No, let's not hit the microphone. <laughs> That's sure awesome. You do. Let's see. I need to put padding under that. All right. So what's the first thing that we get in this? Chopstick. It is the chopstick. So what actually is this? Is this the strategy guide? I think this is just holding the chopstick. I'll hold you the unbox chopstick. it. I'll, I'll, I'll hold the thing up. So this is, I think this is just for the chopsticks. Chopstick. Oh, I said chopsticks. I like you said chopstick. I said yeah, chopstick. chapstick. This is chapstick. No, it's chopsticks. <laughs> Uh, which is actually kind of cool. They're bamboo, and they got little, you know, panda paw prints on them. That's kind of cool. My hair is actually getting long. I don't know how to actually use chopsticks, so I'm probably just going to use them for my hair. Probably. It's getting long enough now. Uh, let me see the book. I'll show, them the, I'll show them the book. It's pretty on the back. You take that. All right, so here is the actual strategy guide. This thing is really thick, too. Check this out. It's very thick. It's, like, really, really thick. I just noticed that my timer stopped over there, so I don't know exactly how long the show's going to run now. It's going to go forever. It's just going to go forever. So here is... I can't see this either. So here's like the inside of the book. That's not a very exciting page. but Not a very exciting page, but it's it's very well made. Like, this is an awesome book. Heavy. It's, gonna it's go very heavy. It's going to go on the shelf behind me. Yeah, she bought it to put on the shelf behind her, by the way. Just... She put this me into the chop yeah. chopsticks. I can't I, see. I, I don't know what's in those. But while we were there, you know, we were obviously picking up GTA 5. Uh, so we picked this up. I ended up getting the PS3 copy, by the way. Just in case anyone knows, here's my Grand Theft Auto 5. I did buy it. I am one of those people who stood in line it was actually pretty for fun. hours. There a lot of people there. Okay, so we've been to a couple of the GameStop events. And normally we show up a lot later. Well, here, here, here is the thing that for this is they called us and was like, hey, we know that you're coming down here and we're doing things a little differently. And we had to show up at six o'clock to stand in line till nine o'clock to get our pre-order receipt, even though we already paid it all off. I also got the PS3 bundle. I got like the whole PlayStation 3 bundle for this. Uh, I was like the only one, too. It was kind of weird. Toss that over there. But so we had to stay in there until nine o'clock. Well, that actually didn't happen the way it was supposed to. We ended up getting there at six, standing around for about maybe an hour. And then they let us all in. They did the final receipts and they were doing a raffle and everything like that. So we got a raffle ticket and 
they were like, okay, so at 1145, we are going to start lining everybody up by groups. Well, we had gotten there a little bit after six and we were already in group five because I mean, there was a lot of people that showed up. So we were like, okay, so what are we going to do in, you know, for until 1145? And so finally they were like, Hey, we got pizza coming. So free pizza. Thanks to the GameStop guys. And they, tasty. it was pretty tasty. It was Domino. And so they were like, you know, come back at like nine o'clock, I think. Or was it 10? They said to come back at nine. nine. The pizza didn't show until 945, by the way. So we sat in the car until 945. And then we went in and we. No, we didn't. We went to the mall. Okay. Yeah. Between the about seven o'clock until nine o'clock, we went to the mall because it's in the same parking lot. And then we ended up coming back and we ate pizza. We hung out with some people, talked to the GameStop guys. We also printed out a whole bunch of GamerTech.tv flyers, and they set them on the counter and was giving them when people were, were checking out. Which so, was awesome. Which was awesome. And they were all gone by, like, the end of the night, too, so it was really cool. Uh, so then we stood around, and you know, we went to, we walked around Walmart to get rid of and time. We walked around the other parking lot, and then it went to Walmart. And then it was time. It was about 11.45, so we came back, and a sea of people showed up, and got their games and we all went in got the game came home you know typical like launch thing but the thing was is that we've been there since like six o'clock we were there forever we, we were there for like five or six hours and i'll never do that again i will just wait until the time uh, to go I don't, I don't know why they told people to show up early it, it was kind of useless but and we lived like 20 minutes away so we couldn't it's not, it's not like we want to drive all the way home yeah, and then right drive there. all the way back and there was a storm that also came through <laughs> So it was raining on top of all fun this. Time. It was just fun times. So I yes, chopsticks out. you got the chopsticks out. Okay, I don't know how to use these. So. Well, I was just telling you. I don't know if it'll actually focus on that. They're kind of hard to see, but they're like black and green, and they're actually real chopsticks. They're yeah. actual bamboo chopsticks. How cool is that? I like them. All right, so that so that was the reason why we haven't been here, and of course the GTA Five event. We all and I've been playing the heck out of some GTA Five. Woo! So much yeah. that I have not leveled in Warcraft. I'm a bad person. Shame. I'm a bad person, I know. Oh. I dropped the book. <laughs> I have nowhere to put it. It's a small set. What can I say? <laughs> All right, one last thing before we move on. Uh, I just want to say congratulations to Chase Nunez from uh, GeekGamer.tv for making it to the final round of the Microsoft uh, job search. He's actually, Yay, he gets to go to, well, he lives in Seattle, so I mean, it's in the Redmond office, so he doesn't have to go far. But he's going to on campus for an interview and he's this close to becoming a new spokesperson or community manager for the Xbox team. I think it's really cool. Don't forget us. When, don't forget us. when you're famous. And- Xbox One. You know, yeah, you know where to hook it up. Okay, <laughs> I got an inside now. I want some cool stuff, some swag. Just get it from Major Nelson if you have to. Anyways, let's move to the first story because we had a couple of stories and a review to get to. I don't even know how long we've actually been talking. All right, first story up is users of the older Xbox 360 say that Grand Theft Auto V crashes their console. Um, I read I read this story, and I, I've talked to some people who have the newer, like, 4-gig models on up, which I'll get to a little thing about the 4-gig models, too. Um, it, but they're basically talking about, like, the Elites and the original white Xbox 360s. Um they've come to the conclusion that they think it's a chip uh, like a chipset issue because if you different variations of it like the ones that don't have hdmi have a different chipset if you get the one that does have hdmi it has a different chipset chipset we can't talk either so they've kind of narrowed it down to certain chipsets not jiving with the game and so a lot of people are having to go out and buy new xbox or 60s but People are making the mistake of going out and buying the four gig model, which doesn't work because you have to have at least eight gig to install the Grand Theft Auto V game. So that's not good. Like you, that doesn't help you at all. Uh, which is lucky too because I actually traded in my Xbox 360, which had the four gig model, uh, towards my PlayStation Three. So I was like, "Whoo, dodge that bullet." Uh, so they think it's different chipsets. Here's my thing is who's the blame for it? Is it Rockstar or is it Microsoft? I mean, the original Xbox is quite old. They've released a couple different versions of it and have told people to 
upgrade if you want better hardware, better performance in the Xbox 360 line. And some people have. And I think even Chase, I think he has one of the original white Xbox 360s. Uh, and I'm pretty sure he's playing on it. I don't think he's had any trouble with it. But he does have HDMI. Listen, I think it's the one with HDMI. You're fine. There was some elites that had hard drive issues with it. Um, but it, if you have like the 20 gig hard drive, it eats up most of it. And plus, if you have anything else installed, you don't have enough space. So unless you have the 120 gig or even the 60 gig, which is kind of hard to find, you're just kind of boned in it. But who, who, who do you think is is responsible for it? Is it Microsoft or is it Rockstar for the way they did the game? I mean, I don't know that it's really anybody's fault. I don't know that anybody could have predicted that that issue would have came up. And you can't really blame Microsoft because it's a product that's, you know, so old. It's not like they would know, you know, in six years, Rockstar's going to put out a game and it's not going to work. We better make sure it's going to. I mean, there's no way anybody can have known that that's Yeah, exactly. But. I mean, I guess maybe Rockstar should have tested it better. I don't know. If we're going to put blame on anybody, maybe that's where it goes. But I mean, here's the thing. and It kind of falls down, at least for me. If you're running the original Xbox and it still works, thank your lucky stars. <laughs> because that thing should literally be dead or on fire. Because most of them have died because they've overheated. Um, I've actually traded in two Xbox 360s that were the white ones because they started to flake out on me. My Xbox 360 I had was the 4 gig edition. There was nothing wrong with it. I just wanted the PS3 because I like the PS3 bundle for Grand Theft Auto 5 better. And it has more games on the Sony side that I was playing on Xbox 360. So I, I think if you have the original Xbox and you're having problems, just suck it up and go buy a new one. I mean, yes, grant you the Xbox One is coming out. Grand Theft Auto 5, we don't know if it's going to be on Xbox One. Most likely it will. Um, so either deal with it and wait and see if it comes out or trade that in trading all the crap that you're not playing and especially you, you could have gotten 30 percent by the way if you did it before the game launched like i did uh you'll get enough to get a new system so i i think that if you're not having issues good for you if you are having issues either wait or suck it up and buy a new xbox or at least get a used newer one you know if you can't afford a new one you're, you're like eyeing me like that's not that's not no, Good. I'm not eyeing you. No, and I know the intern is in here, and the intern <laughs> is being loud. <laughs> yeah, so we, we should know you. that the intern is going to get a talking to and wrote up for, <laughs> for doing for doing what she's doing. Anyways, let's move on to the next story before the intern gets any louder. I was going to make a joke in the beginning of the show, but I decided not to. Uh, Microsoft unveiled the Surface 2. Everyone applause. Yeah, that's about what everyone thought. No one gives a crap. No one really, really, really cares about the surface. Somebody somewhere. Someone somewhere. I know I'm alienating people, but someone somewhere is just like... What's so bad about them? Okay, what, the surface? Yeah. Okay. I I don't... It's it's confused. It thinks it's a laptop, and it's kind of a crappy laptop, but it thinks it's a tablet, and it's kind of a crappy tablet. Like, it doesn't know what it is. That's the way that I take it. Now, if you're just uh, you know a normal everyday user, you don't care about you know, and you really like Windows 8 or the Windows Phone, you know, Metroid system, then hey, you know, the Surface could be could be for you. Now, the old Surface RTs are going to be pretty cheap now, and then we got the new Surface uh, RT and the Surface uh, 2 Pro that are, that are going to be out. There's slight differences. The original Surface RT was a 1.3 gigahertz quad core, Tegra 3. And then the Surface 2 is a 1.7 gigahertz quad core uh, Tegra 4. So a little bit of an upgrade in speed. Uh, Screen is 10.6, 1366 by 768 resolution, 148 uh, PPI, which is TV is that. It's pretty weird. Uh, The Surface 2 is 1920 by 1080. So higher death screen. Uh, it's still 10.6 inches and it's 207 PPI instead of 148. So you get a brighter, so you get a better looking screen. Yay. Uh, you can probably find that screen on Android or obviously an iPad. 
Uh, RAM is two gig. This is what confused me. The RAM is two gigabytes on the Surface RT one, Surface RT or the Surface two. They're just calling it Surface two and the Surface two Pro. It's also two gigs of RAM. Why would they not? Why, why did they do that? Why bump up the processor and the screen resolution, but not give me more RAM? Like why? They you can't tell me they couldn't have four gigs in this thing. Who knows? I Maybe mean, they just don't want to waste. They know it's like they, they know it's a paperweight. So. That's exactly what it is. They know it's a paperweight. Um, the front camera on the Surface RT one was one point two megapixels at seven twenty p. Yeah, horrible. Uh, Surface two five megapixels ten eighty p. Better, better. But again, you're you're gonna look like one of those people who are holding up a tablet, taking a <laughs> picture. You're that guy. You don't want to be that guy. I'm that guy. <laughs> I, yeah, you are that guy. <laughs> you exactly did that. Now, the rear camera on the old Surface was 1.2 megapixels, 720p HD, just same as the front. The back camera on this one is only 3.5 megapixels and 1080p. So it's not five on the back. It's five It's five in the front, three in the back. So when you, like, that's the Again, one facing you, right? Yeah, the one facing you is five. The one in the back that you normally take pictures with is 3.5 megapixels so, see i wouldn't think you would think that you would think it would go the, the other, other way. way yeah yeah i just realized my lower third says episode three but that's fine well it, it, the date's right so what's the difference right uh okay so the storage shame. is 32 gigabytes i know and 64 gigabytes on the old one 32 gigabytes and 64 gigabytes on the new one pretty typical they're not going to give you more storage Nobody needs more storage, right? 64 is plenty. Who's going to use that? I only have 16. Like... You, I know. Like this, the tablet we're going to review tonight has 16, and your iPad has 16. And granted, your iPad's running out of room. You, 32 could have well, been. Well, I also have like, you know, 50 games. Yeah. Here, here's, the, here's, yeah. The, here's another kicker, too. The weight of the original Surface, 1.5 pounds. The new one, 1.49 pounds. All right. It's a little. What? What? Yeah. I why why yeah i know just call it 1.5 round up all right so it has of course you know wi-fi bluetooth all the typical things you'll find in a tablet uh 4.99 for the original surface 4.49 for this surface for the 32 gigabyte anyways it's, it's 4.49 so 50 dollars cheaper than what the other one launched at and they're still not gonna sell it. And they're still not gonna sell any because the, the, here's the thing with these: is these only appeal to certain people. Someone who just wants a tablet who's familiar with Windows and doesn't care about anything else. They want to check their email. They want to play games. I'll wait. They don't have any apps. Uh, there could be games, but so you know, the, those are the people or IT professionals who work with like Microsoft Exchange or things like that because you know, they're gonna all tie that into it. Companies are going to use this to 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 a point but apple's already kind of got their niche in the in the companies too with, with the ipad so they're kind of going to, going to kind of fight that uh so i mean it's an okay device but no i'm not i'm not gonna buy one and this is just for the surface 2 this isn't for the surface pro the surface pro is 899 dollars does it upgrade? Okay. Here, okay. Here's the thing. Okay. So we're going to, or that was just the regular surface. We're going to look at the surface Two pro. Um, basically it's almost the same specs. There's a 25% increase in processor speed and, and, and things like that. Other than that, it's pretty much the same thing. So what are you paying for? It, because it has a uh, it has a little bit faster of a processor, and this is where the more memory kicks in. So really, you're paying an extra four hundred dollars for not that much. How much extra memory? You, you that's where you get the four gigabytes, really? according to the story. Yeah. yeah. So eight ninety. I'm not gonna pay eight ninety nine for this. Not at no. all. Not at all. Um, I pretty sure this will be another Microsoft paperweight. Yeah. They just need to get out of the tablet market. It's too flooded as it is. I mean, they just bought Nokia a couple of weeks ago. We talked about that. They're gonna, they're gonna be so swamped. It, it's too late for them. 
so stick with the Xbox. That's, that's what they're good at. Okay, just stick with that. You get rid of the tablets and everything else. And make something better than Windows 8. Because nobody likes it. I understand it on a tablet. I do understand that. But as far as Windows 8 for anything else, no. So am I, am I wrong in this? No. Would you pay eight ninety nine for this? No, but I don't know that... Like, I don't know that I would go as far as... I mean, they're Microsoft. I feel like they could or should be able to put out a good tablet. Like, I don't know that they Here, should the give up on that. Like, but they need to rethink it. Here's, the, here's their problem. Is they can't get the cost cheap enough like Android. And they can't go too... Well, except for this one. You can't go too expensive, more expensive than the iPad. They need to be... They're going to be stuck in the middle. Right. And it, people are going to go, well, why am I going to get something in the middle when I can... You got two sets of people. I want something cheap. I want quality product. Sometimes you get lucky and get quality product for cheap price. Most people buy an iPad because they want the build quality and the functionality. Nobody wants anything in the middle because it's going to be in that weird space of I'm paying $100 less for something that's crap. But I, I don't know that it's a surface... <laughs> Like, I think the biggest issue is the lack of apps. I think apps is a big issue. Microsoft had the same apps that Android and iPad offered yeah. that a lot more people might buy the Surface because it is something like it's Microsoft. I'm familiar with Microsoft. I'm familiar with Windows. I'm, I'm going to get that because, you know, they, the same way you're saying people buy Apple. Like, you know, well, some people might feel like, oh, it's Microsoft. There's, you know, that quality and that brand behind it. Yeah, because I mean there are Microsoft fanboys, but I mean I don't even think they're buying the service right. Now. Yeah, that's the problem. They're not buying it either. <laughs> but I think it has to go down to lack of apps. I mean, you're not going to buy a tablet or any type of portable device like that without. I mean, the whole point is apps. Yeah. What is a tablet without apps? And if they don't have those, they're, I mean, that's what's not selling it. Yeah. Yeah, and then not having apps. This is also an issue with the Windows Phone. It doesn't have apps. So either get and app developers don't want to touch it. They're just like Android's fine, iPad's fine. I don't. They don't want to be in the middle. Right. It's all about being in the middle, and Microsoft is stuck in that middle when it comes to phones and tablets. So they need to get out of the middle. But as long as Google can punch out a you know a brand new Nexus Seven for like hundred ninety nine bucks, you're yeah. never gonna get a you're never gonna get a Surface that cheap. Right. So, yeah, Microsoft, nice try, but no one's biting. All right, let's move on to the next story. I found, okay, so I kind of found this last minute because we kind of missed out being down. You know, I was not looking at stories that much. I'm playing too much GTA. Uh, Valve has set up an announcement. There's actually a teaser page. If you search on uh, Steam 2013 uh, announcement. There's a teaser page and it was counting down. There's three announcements total. That's way too many fingers. There's three <laughs> announcements total for something. We didn't know what it was. So everyone was like, oh my God, Half-Life 3. No, it's not that. It's not Half-Life 3. And the intern is looking very I know, the like intern is looking half sad. Second, like, where she was like, <gasps> like, man, it could have been Half-Life 3. No, the first announcement was released today. There's going to be one on Wednesday and I think one on Friday. Uh, and we've heard rumors of a Steam box. If you know what a Steam box is, it's basically what they're calling a link. I would call it a link from your computer to your big screen TV. And w what it does is, and this is the first announcement, is they've announced the Steam OS, which is going to be free to download. So you can make your own Steam boxes if you wish. We think the other two announcements are going to be a controller or peripherals for it. And then the third one will be actual, like a Steam box that you can buy just right out. It has the OS, everything like that. It runs off Linux. And everyone was just kind of like, okay, there's only certain games on Linux on Steam. But here's the kicker. Is one of the cool features of this, and I was actually really excited when I saw this, is that they have something called basically game streaming. And some people think this is cool. Some people think this is actually not that good or they could have done it, I guess, a little better. Is you, if you log into Steam using your PC or your Mac, 
Any game that is... Wow, now the set's <laughs> falling over. Awesome. Any game you have oh. on the actual, like that you've downloaded, you can actually load that game on your computer and send it to the Steam box. And you can play that game on your big screen TV. It basically streams the game, which is kind of a cool idea because I mean, it's running on Linux. So if you want to play the games that don't run on Linux, you have to use this feature. It only does it on your local network. It doesn't do it like over what you know, like you know across the internet that we know of it's kind of worded kind of funny like they're kind of like not telling us that there's not a whole lot of information that was actually released it was basically like it has in-home streaming and you'll have access to like movies you know tvs shows netflix things like that um there's family share which is kind of cool i think you can, and you can also do this on the pc if like say your brother or your parents have a game you want to play and they don't want to basically buy it again you can request to borrow it and you can do this online or over you know a network or anything you know stuff like that so if they live in one state and you live in another you can still borrow it i think it's kind of cool and once you're done with it you know they, they can turn off access to it and someone else can borrow it a friend or anything like that i think it's kind of cool and you can also set up family options which is basically like say you don't want Timmy over here to find GTA five that comes out on PC. Eventually he won't see it in his list. He'll only see the games that you provide him to be able to see. So it does have like some parent controls that are built in, which is kind of cool, but that that's really all they gave us was the family sharing in home streaming music, TV movies, like we all know, and that it'll be free to download eventually. I think this is kind of a cool idea. Like if you have an empty box just laying around and it was powerful enough and everything like that, sure, throw it on there. And, you know, it has big picture mode, which is something they've tested. Here's my one problem with this is if what's the difference in me just hooking my computer straight up to my TV? Right. Like where? What What's the the benefit of. Say you buy this, the, the actual branded Steam box, and there's been rumors of it being $1,000. Okay, but the hardware is not spectacular. You know, for that $1,000, I can actually build a really great kick-butt gaming machine and hook it up to my big screen TV. Right. And I thought that had to do with resolution. Well, okay, well, here's the thing, is that you can run big picture mode in Steam on anything. Okay. Like, I can hook my computer up to my TV throw it in big picture mode and it's the same thing i see and i understand that like you know if you want a dedicated machine for doing this but you still have to come in here and turn your normal pc on right i think that's the disconnect that people are gonna hate they want to be able to make it their own they well like I, it should operate on itself like a console well here's the thing and i and the problem is is because you have games released on mac linux and windows and you can't run those same games on you can't run the Windows games on Linux unless this one has been ported over. Right. What people would love to have this do is that I can log into my Steam account through the Steam OS on whatever box I put it on or if I buy one, access my library and have it kind of basically go, oh, okay, this is a Windows game. Hang on a sec. Right. And then fix it to load on that operating system. Sounds like a really big achievement. I know. But it doesn't sound very far-fetched because a lot of people don't realize that when they make these games, all of them are made on a computer. Xbox 360, PS3, P Xbox One, PS4, all of them are made on a computer, either a Mac or a PC. And then they're ported to said console. I think that it, I mean, Steam works, and that's the why, why Steam works on Linux and Mac and that some of these game companies have ported over their games to those is because you're just changing a little bit of the code to flip the launcher to realizing that, oh, this is a different operating system. I think if Valve and Steam can figure out how to do that on the fly, that would be really cool. And I think people would download this OS, even if they charged 50 bucks for it. I would pay that if, if I could play every one of my Steam titles that are on my computer on my big screen for whatever reason, if I didn't want to just hook it straight up. You know, that someone people want a dedicated box like a console. Right. I think it'd be really cool if they did that. But I don't know. Maybe the tech's not there or they just haven't figured that out yet. But people can dream, right? No. So, maybe one of the other announcements will be Half-Life 3. 
Now, okay, here's the <laughs> thing with this, though. If the last announcement was Half-Life 3, I think the internet would explode. I think literally it would just go down and catch on fire. Server farms would burn to the ground. Our house would explode. Our, the house would explode, and it would be... Then we wouldn't be able to play Half-Life 3. <laughs> or Half-Life 3 doesn't exist. I, I, I don't think it's even out there. I think somewhere Gabe Newell is just, like, keeping it, like, in a safe with a key somewhere and like underneath his bed next to his cookies or something he's cookies by his bed you know this dude yeah he talks about it <laughs> okay. you gotta read between the lines man all right so the last thing we're going to talk about since team os we don't know much about it uh the other announcement's going to come on wednesday and we will talk about the actually both of them will be out by the time we do the saturday show yep all right, so the last thing we're going to do is we're going to review something. Now, I noticed we talked about reviewing things, and people are going to be like, oh, my God, they reviewed a tablet. Really? You're supposed to talk about gaming stuff. You can game on a tablet. Ask my father. This is his tablet, actually. And he plays the tribes constantly because it's a cool game. So a tablet is definitely a gaming device. It's a portable gaming device. Anyways, I, he picked this up, and I'm going to try to take it out of the case so you can actually see the back of it here without doing anything to it there we go all right so this is the toshiba excite 10 this is a 10 inch android tablet and of course all my specs for it are actually on the tablet so that's probably not a good idea to turn that off <laughs> good job all right here's the here's the here's the rundown and specs let me get to the thing it's running four point according to this is running 4.2 jelly bean which is not right. I don't think they've actually pushed the 4.2 because I think it's still running 4.12. Uh, but it is running a version of Jelly Bean that you get out of the box. Uh, it is powered by an, an NVIDIA Tegra processor. It has what they call... It's it's a it's not like a retina display. The display is actually really nice on it. I mean, I know my camera is not going to do a whole lot of justice for this. Uh, but the screen was actually really, really nice. And the back of it's got this nice texture on the back it's actually really cool it does have a front and rear facing camera uh, the screen is 1280 by 800 so it is a high def screen it's 10.1 and you know I, i've tried other tablets before and they and they have that kind of you know android has that lag problem like when you flip around stuff or like when you surf the web and i was really really surprised that i did not find that when i when i was playing with this it's actually really really snappy I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to look at what the processor speed is. It does have micro HD, uh, micro HDMI port. According to this, it says Jelly Bean 4.2. It might be running 4.2. I could be mistaken. It has a micro SD slot. This is actually really cool. It's a 16 gig tablet, but you can put a micro SD card into it. So you can actually get more storage, which is one thing I think the iPad is really lacking. Yeah, I do wish I had that. Um, It also has a, it has a very wide angle as far as like how like how you can view it it's actually got like a 170 degree angle it's actually really really cool i'm trying to find the actual specs for it and they're not on here i could swear i pulled these up uh, the battery life is really good um stays plugged in most of the time but uh we have ran it out a couple times what do you say the battery life is Oh, if you if you use it from start to finish and you're just surfing around websites and everything like that, I think you can get probably four to five hours out of it. That's not bad. Not entirely too bad. Um, here, here's the one thing about this, though. I went and looked this up on Amazon. They don't sell it new anymore. They don't? No. That was the one thing that I, I I'm really surprised because it's not that old. They don't sell it anymore. When it was out, it was two ninety nine, which seems a little expensive for an Android tablet. That's especially with the Nexus Seven that just came out. But this, remember, this is a ten inch, not a seven inch. Right. Comparing clear. it to an iPad, I was actually fairly impressed with it. Um, it's really snappy. The screen is actually really, really gorgeous. Uh, he's got a couple of, like background. He's got like I think it's Next three D launcher, which kills phones. By the way. 
unless you have a really powerful phone, but this is a quad core. I don't have the specs for the, uh, for the speed. I'll put them in the show notes because they're not on here. Um, flipping back and forth between the screens, really, really snappy. I don't want to show too much of his information that's on here, but you know, it, it's really snappy going back and forth. Uh, it's light, lighter than the iPad. This is the one thing that, that, that made her mad because the iPad itself is actually fairly heavy. And it's, it's heavier than you would expect it to be. It, it really is. And, uh, I'm trying, I'm trying to find the iPad. Hey, intern, can you come hand me the iPad, please? Um, iPad is over there here on the side is, is the, is the actual power button. And then on the other side, you got like the micro SD slot and then you got the volume and everything like that. This is the iPad. This is an iPad four. This is also really, really dark. Intern has such attitude. I know it. intern, man. He's a job <laughs> evaluation. So this is the iPad four. And this is the Toshiba Excite. It's a little longer than the iPad four. Mostly plastic though. Screen size, this is actually a little bit bigger. So I think the iPad's like, what, 9.6? Yeah, like... I think it's 9.6, 9.8. This is actually 10.1. So it's a little bit bigger than the iPad. But if, if you're looking for something just to, like, game around on, there are some games we found that weren't compatible. And I think it's because either Toshiba hasn't actually pushed out the update for this. Because it's all, it says it's supposed to be running Jelly Bean 4.2. But I swear there was a game that we tried to load that said it requires 4.2 and it didn't load. Um, so there, uh, there might just be that issue. It might need to be updated. I've ran all the updates, but maybe Toshiba hasn't pushed it out yet. It was $2.99 when you bought it online. I did find some used ones. I mean, they were unopened ones on eBay for like $1.89. So if you're looking for a 10-inch tablet to just kind of throw in your backpack and not worry about worry about it too much in the sense of, you know, breaking it or anything like that you know the ipad's 500 dollars. you know compared to the you know to 200 dollars for this uh with the micro sd card the front and back camera are okay i mean they're not the greatest i think they're 1.3 megapixels if i remember correctly and i think the back is three me- or the front's uh the back is three megapixels front is 1.3 not the greatest camera but again you don't want to be this person you don't want to be the person holding it up like this y- you just don't want to be that person unlike her so if you're looking what? for it, yeah, I was, I was talking about. I'm, I'm answering somebody who asked a question on the show. Oh, someone asked a question. I mean, people actually watch this. Yeah. Wow, it's amazing. But you know, for for the price, if you can find one actually in the store online, there was a couple stores that had them still. I think Staples still had them, but you know, it's that kind of like once they run out of stock, it's gone type thing. Uh, I would recommend this. Uh, out of five stars, I'd give it a four. Uh, only thing that was kind of weird is the operating system version. It's not running the one that they said, and I can't get it to push an update. And it's not telling me it needs an update. If, but if you're looking for something to just throw around, you know, when you're going to the gym or you're sitting at home in the living room and you want to sync with applications or if you want to just download games, it's it's very powerful, very snappy, everything like that. There's a the question. All he gets is unsupported player. Yes, and I know why people are getting the unsupported player. If you're watching on an Android device... Android has something to do with the ad block. Like if in Chrome or the way that it blocks the ads, I don't know why, because there's actually an ad that'll run before the show. And then if it blocks that in any way, it kills the player. So I don't know if there's something I can fix or if it's something on Twitch, but we're moving away from Twitch to daily motion. So hopefully that'll go away. I hope that's not you trying to answer his question. Cause I don't know if you noticed that he can't see the video. Well, he can. <laughs> no, Okay. This is what so this is. We're going to have a talk now. So this is what's going to happen for people who don't watch the live stream and want their questions asked and they don't see them. They have to therefore download or watch it on the website so that we get views. I see. Say so, so now he's going to have to come watch the show afterwards to see if I answered his question. <laughs> I'll be Isn't sure that to awesome? Hey, the, the, he could not care and not watch that. That is his choice. He likes us a lot. But he likes us. He watch. So for a 10 inch Android tablet, the specs with the dual core, the cameras aren't the greatest. So if you, I mean, if you're just taking quick pictures for Facebook or to post on Twitter, I think they're fine. Uh, if you can get one, I suggest getting one. It's 
around two hundred dollars if you can find them um, online. So yeah, I, I would suggest picking one up. It's it's light, and my dad uses it all the time. So, and for him to actually like something portable, has to be pretty good. So yeah, he's used. To, he's a big uh, monitor guy. So, anyways, okay. I, I don't know. I don't know how long we actually ran. Hey intern, can you tell me what that clock says over there? In the very corner, it says how long I've been on the line. See at the very top, it says CPU usage and then time. Okay, so we're about on time. See, I know what I'm doing. All right, so just remember, we are going to be streaming GTA 5 once I get a converter that gets rid of the HDCP and the PS3. But until then, we're going to be streaming WoW Raids and Counter-Strike Go. Uh, I think it's the only thing we're going to be streaming right now. At least that's all I have set up. Uh, but hopefully we get GTA going. BlizzCon event is November 8th. We will be broadcasting live during the press conference part. I know some people have asked us, so are you going to cover the tournaments? We'll probably talk about them, and we're going to watch the whole coverage. We'll probably talk about that just in the show. But we will have a special live event just for the press conference for World of Warcraft. I think they're going to do World of Warcraft and Diablo, I think, on the same one. I'm not sure. The schedule hasn't put out hasn't been put out yet. And then someone turns on an iPad game. <laughs> My bad. This person is going to get... There was fun. no sound during this anything person. else until that. You know, you know how they always say you have that one episode that you don't ever <laughs> upload, you don't want anyone to ever notice. I think this might be it. No. So if we do another show later on in the week, you know why. It's no. fine. No. Anyways, we'll be streaming that. Also, if you're watching on Twitch.tv, I know we're moving away from Twitch, but we'll probably stream to both. Hit the like button or the heart or follow button, whatever they call it. Hit that because she gets upset if people don't follow us. Like the Facebook page, please like the Facebook page. I want to throw it up on on the screen. These are all the accounts you can follow us on for Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus, and YouTube. Go there, subscribe, like, leave comments. Unless they're bad, and then you can send them to Annie at GamerTech.tv. Oh. Yeah. Just saying. So, that's the social media. Hit us up. We're going to definitely be live. We think the internet problem is fixed. I haven't seen any flash queue. I think we're good on that. Is there anything you want to add? Or are you just going to play Candy Crush? <laughs> I just like Candy Crush for the last part. Because that's exactly what you're doing. <laughs> I am. Yeah, you... tried. We're going to be streaming our race to 90 directly after this. Yes. And we're if you're, if you're watching the live stream... You get bonus bonus event. We're gonna be streaming the last level of us getting to ninety in World of Warcraft. If you're watching pre record, then I'm sorry. You should watch live. All you gotta do is follow us on social media and you'll know when we're live. I still think Mondays are gonna be a crappy day for us. But that's just me. We'll work on it. We'll work on it. All right, so there's nothing else we're gonna add. I think that's going to do it. We'll be back here Saturday for another episode, be episode five for Gamer Tech. Dot TV. We're going to be streaming live right after this. So just kind of hang around if you're around. Of course, follow us on social media. Until then, as the intern will say, go play more games or she'll come kick your ass.